Hey guys, how's she going today? Well, we're gonna get the uh, 46 out of the way here in the hay bind because mom wants to cut the grass here. We had a uh, little better than an inch of rain here yesterday. And now it's just a beautiful day out here today. So we're gonna get this out of the way and then go back in the shop for a little bit until uh, the guy says he's ready for us to bring him his load of bales there. And then I'm not sure what else the plan is for the day, but we'll find something to do. <laughs> What levers does Antoine have it on? Here we go. Talk about being rusty here about <laughs> how fast it swings back and forth. Anyway, I'm gonna get this out of the way and then we'll go in the shop and I'll show you what's happening in there. Would you just look at that? Would you just look at it? Oh, I didn't show you that yet, what we did yesterday. That's the old uh, weight off the uh, front of the 46. And I wasn't really sure what to do with it, so there's a pretty good home for it on the front of this guy. Seeing as how that's the tractors that uh, those weights are actually meant for, so. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you the cannolis here. So here's the canolas, right by the yard here. See, here's one that was flowering quite a bit before the other ones. It's already got uh, pods that it's developing here but other tendricles are still flowering see that see there's a little pod starting so the end of those little flowers and they dry up and whatnot that's your uh, comes your becomes your pods so the more flowers you have the better your crops gonna be you can kind of kind of get an early idea of what you're looking at for a, a crop See, look at all the little flowers coming on them. Right here isn't very good because it's, well, where all the traffic is all the time in and out of the yard. It's uh, packed harder, but overall this one's looking pretty good. That 30 whatever acres there across the creek where we reseeded that oats, it got uh, messed up pretty bad by that frost. There's quite a few bare spots in it, but at least it's only the... Uh, 30 acres it's not everything it could be a lot worse so <laughs> it is what it is kind of fills the space up in here this guy <laughs> so what we were working on yesterday for the roller screener in there we put a new belt on and then the uh, this bearing up here was no good anymore so we changed that we got another bearing back here, but it's been a pain in the arse to come apart. Uh, can you see back there? Not really. How can we go? <laughs> hmm. Can't really see in there with the camera, but anyway. The, uh... There we go. You can see all the balls in the bearing there, so... That one's toast, but we gotta get this pulley pulled off of here. And that's what runs the crank for your straw walkers inside there. So we gotta get that pulled apart. We're gonna change that bearing. Same with on this side, cause that crank comes right through and it's behind here, but that. And then Antoine here uh, cut a strip. 
and welded that on here because it was uh, pretty well punched right through. That's the rethrash, one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. Instead of your returns just going back up to the cylinder into your rotor on a rotary, they've got this goddamn thing, a little mini one. And uh, you can see their ass bars in there, just like in a cylinder, and that's how they rethrash your returns. And then it gets dumped back on the sieves again, but... Ah, it's a really, really, really stupid idea, but I guess. And my favorite part is on the newer New Hollands, they brought that idea back. Why they would do something like that, I don't know, but... Anyway, so we got that in here to do that. And then I was working inside the cab here because we had fucking mice get up in the roof in the quan set. So I vacuumed a bunch of it out. I got to open up the top of the roof now. But I was, uh, I put a few screws in to hold all that up because it was all falling down. And I got to do the same thing here. But I'm probably going to use silicone on that and up here. And then I want to make a piece, I'll get some some sort of fabric and I'm going to put a piece in the door here. So that's kind of what's uh, going on right now. And we're going to work on that for a little bit and then we got to get the haybine moved to uh, one of our other pieces we do. And I'll tell you why we're moving it there when we're moving it there. So I guess we'll talk to you here in a little bit. Here, Twan, you take this and you show them where the cracks are. Look, they'll be happy. Twan's videoing. That works good for cleaning <laughs> your grain. Well, I thought you would sum up by the Oh, way well, up. Yeah, you can't see it from here. Oh, fuck your shitty videographer, Twan. <laughs> <laughs> that works for cleaning your grain, too. Tell them the story when you were combining a sieve fell out and you couldn't tell the difference. It was still clean. Yeah. Didn't even... Then how long did you drive around looking in the straw swath till you found the bitch? Half an hour. An hour? Yeah, that was a while. <laughs> Combining along and he thought it was looking like it was just starting to get tough. And how did you notice you got out to take a leak? And yeah, notice the sieve was gone. Yeah. Just happened to glance in here and the whole sieve was missing. <laughs> that was the plastic one, wasn't it? That one. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it still had the air, the airfoil in the top, so the airfoil was doing all the work, so it shows the difference that having both of them, it just goes from clean to looking like it's starting to get tough, had some beards and unthrashed heads in it. Because <laughs> you did what, like three hoppers without it? <laughs> but I guess when it's getting to be seven o'clock when it starts to get tough, you wouldn't really question it, so... <laughs> Well, we're cutting again, and we're into one of our, our uh, one of our first actual fields here. This is uh, it's called wildlife land, and uh, the wildlife, uh, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> they bought a qu this quarter, and then they sow it into grass, and then they just let the trees and the grass and everything grow, and they've got uh, a deadline. Like, well, the, the soonest time you can cut it, and then the latest time that you can cut it. And, uh, so we're, uh, we're in our, the deadline here to cut this piece. And there's, uh, there's about 70 acres in here that's not, uh, trees or anything that's nice open hay like this. There's a mix of alfalfa and brome grass. But, uh, it's getting to be a real old stand. It's about, uh, I don't know, the majority of it's knee high. This right here is really shitty in the corner here. It's quite a bit better, better further into the field, but whatever, we're still making a swath and it's uh, free to cut or whatever, clean it up like that. They do like it getting uh, cut so that it's not just, uh, I guess like a fire hazard basically when you've got uh, hip high dry grass everywhere. 
And then uh, cutting it like that and getting rid of the, so there's not dead stuff, it encourages the growth so it keeps growing the next years. I mean, after a few years of not getting cut, all of that dead trash <clears throat> laying on top, it'll uh, start to choke out the rest of the grass. So anyway, Antoine's cutting. I was just here for a few minutes when we moved it, make sure everything was uh, gonna work and it wasn't gonna be too, uh, damp underneath of the hay after that rain so we get a couple more shots of him cutting here I guess then we're gonna go back to the shop now uh, there are a couple of people asking about how we do headlands and open the fields up and everything with the tractor ahead of the header I do it a little different than he does Antoine does he drives the tractor along the outside here first with the hay bine in and then he'll double back around so that the hay bine is on this side and you don't want to be going the same direction that the hay is laid because you'll go over it you want to go against it and you'll scoop it up see and when I do it I put the tractor there and the hay bine here and then I just double around and do my headland but both ways work the same anyway so but he's on his way back here so I'll shut up and you can listen to the machine that way <laughs> why in a video it always looks slower than what he's going but he's going about four four and a half miles an hour if it was a, a real super smooth field you'd be able to go faster you'd probably be able to go five five and a half six but it's rough 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 in here well all of our stuff hay is rough just because it's all old stands but uh Most of it is uh, not ours, it's done on shares or rented, so I'm not going to start uh, working up other land and reseeding it that's not mine, so especially this you're not allowed to do anything with. When this is too shitty to cut anymore, then it's just whatever. They don't really care because it's for the deers and the birds, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's going to make good time. He'll be damn near done here by this evening anyways when he shuts her down for the night and then we've got a 130 acre piece and then uh, I don't know what our my actual piece is there another 70 or so acres and then uh, a couple more yards but anyway all right back to the shop we go <laughs> Said he was ready for his load of ales here, so we are. Uh, he's only a few miles away, so we're gonna get this hauled to him. The old girl's dragging ours pretty bad because the roads are so soft from the rain we've been having, but he's only a few miles away, so we'll just take our time and we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Richard here and go make some supper because I guess it's about that time now. And then uh, I'll probably head back out to the shop and do a little bit of tinkering on the Massey. But uh, I'll save that for another video anyways. But I guess I'll probably end her here because I've got some video editing to do now. I guess that's about it so make sure you hit that like button subscribe for more thanks for watching we'll talk to you guys here in the next one